Vasari tells a lovely story about a wood panel painting created by Leonardo da Vinci at his father's request. Sir Piero da Vinci was carrying out a benevolent deed for a local peasant with whom he was friendly and who often helped him with hunting and fishing. One day, the peasant brought Sir Piero a round piece of fig tree wood and asked if it could be taken to Florence to be painted. This is how Vasari's story begins. Quote, it is said that when Sir Piero da Vinci was at his country villa, he was sought out at home by one of his peasants, who had with his own hand made a small round shield from the wood of a fig tree on the farm which he had cut down and who wanted Sir Piero to have it painted in Florence. He was delighted to do this since the peasant was very experienced in catching birds and fish and Sir Piero made great use of him in these activities." Unquote. Sir Piero decided to take the shield to Florence and ask his son to decorate it. We don't know with certainty which of Vasari's anecdotes are based in truth and which are gossip or a figment of his fruitful imagination. But irrespective of its veracity, the story gives us an insight into people's attitudes to art at the time. And not only art, but craft too. After all, the peasant carved the wood himself and his desire to turn it into an art object reflects ordinary people's affinities with the process of creation. Vasari highlights the crudeness and unrefined handmade quality of the object in his description of how Leonardo had to straighten it over a fire because it was so crooked, smoothing it out and prepping it with gesso. Sapiro didn't really provide any specifics to Leonardo or tell him who the commission was for. He just asked his son to paint something upon it. So Leonardo had full freedom to create whatever his heart desired. It turns out his heart desired something a little scary. The story unravels into a Leonardesque whimsy with a touch of horror. Using the shield as a clever and inventive artifice, Leonardo painted upon it the terrifying head of Medusa, referring to the myth of Perseus who killed one of the Gorgon sisters by using Athena's mirrored shield. The work thus became a reflection of Medusa's head, allowing us, the viewers, to avoid being turned to stone by her powerful gaze. According to Vasari, to make Medusa's image as naturalistic as possible, Leonardo collected all sorts of weird and wonderful creatures, such as lizards, bats, crickets, snakes, butterflies, and other reptiles and insects. Unfortunately, the creatures died in the studio, but Leonardo kept on painting and ignoring the smell. By combining the various features of the animals, Leonardo painted a figure Quote, with venom issuing from its open jaws, fire from its eyes, and smoke from its nostrils, a monstrous and horrible thing indeed. Unquote. Importantly, what this tale conveys is how Leonardo used assemblage and still life to create his fanciful mythical creatures. Such an elaborate use of props was second nature to Leonardo. This became evident sometime later in his career when he served as an incredibly talented stage and set designer for spectacular, extravagant pageant performances at the Milan court of Ludovico Sforza. Perhaps not surprisingly then, when Sir Piero arrived to pick up the painting, Leonardo staged his own house of horrors by setting it up in the dimly lit room and scaring the living wits out of his father. Sir Piero loved the work so much that instead of giving it to the peasant, he sold the curious masterpiece to the Florentine merchants for 100 ducats, who in turn sold it to the Duke of Milan for 300. He then purchased a similar wooden disc with a heart pierced by a dart and gave it back to the unwitting peasant, who remained forever grateful. Works similar to Leonardo's famous Medusa shield have been created by numerous artists whom Vasari's story may have inspired. Michelangelo Merisi da Caravaggio created two versions, both similarly painted on round poplar wood shields, between 1596 and 1597. A work by 
an unknown Flemish artist dated circa 1620 to 1630, located in the Uffizi, was erroneously attributed to the hand of Leonardo himself in the late 18th century. This attribution was subsequently reassessed and withdrawn in the 20th century. Peter Paul Rubens may have seen Caravaggio's painting when he traveled to Florence in October of 1600. He painted his version of the Medusa in 1618, engaging the help of Franz Snyders to paint the elaborate arrangement of snakes. Leonardo's work, however, immortalized in Vasari's tale, has been lost, but could possibly turn up in someone's basement one day, petrifying the lucky owner with its chilling gaze. <laughs>